Hey YouTube, what's going on? It is Jackstar back with another video, and today we're going to be doing the first of my first video video of my Road to Max series. I have chosen three cycle decks, 2.6 Hog Rider, obviously, 3.0 Expo, obviously, and Log Bait, pretty obviously as well. These are the three most popular decks, I think, that are like kind of cycle. Log Bait's cycle-ish, it's like 3.1. But these are I think the most popular ones, and so I want to help you guys out while learning the decks myself so that I can use them on my main account at some point. And so we're going to be going over a few replays first and then we'll hop into some live games. Also, skillful spammers, we actually did end up creating this clan. Currently we are sitting at I think 47 members. So if don't hesitate to request if you see a spot open as long as you're above 4000 for the moment we will accept you. We are an active war clan too. The clan got to 36,000 war points within a day or two. We will always finish our wars, probably even at first place with how active these guys are. So a big shout out to everybody in the clan that's already doing war. I didn't even do my attacks because I didn't think we were going to do it. But yeah, if you guys are into war, we will get the job done for you. Even uh, overleveled matchmaking. I know all that sucks, man. I've been playing a little bit on my all. I know overleveled matchmaking ladder or absolutely sucks. But if you guys want war, if you guys want a friendly and active atmosphere that all donations will be filled, Come and join the Skillful Spammers. Love to have you. And without uh, any more on that, we'll hop right into the deck of today, which is 3.0 Expo. And this is probably my favorite of the three decks. Um, all of them are really good because cycle decks generally are just better at controlling off-meta stuff. If you waste an answer to an off-meta unit, you can usually cycle back faster. If you make a mistake, usually it's going to be a bit more forgiving with these quick... Uh, cycle cards to fix your mistakes i mean again obviously making a mistake sucks but like these decks usually have the most forgiveness with smaller mistakes bigger mistakes every deck fails but like if smaller mistake you can get away with it a little bit more and especially with expo where you can kind of play clash of clans or that is stacking a bunch of defensive units onto the map you can be over leveled pushes easily by stacking and then counter pushing and this is just my favorite deck so I'll hop into a few replays after my phone charges a bit. I'm recording this right after the previous video, which was Royal Hogs Bar Putts. So make sure to go check that out if you haven't already. Link will be in the description. But yeah, I'm recording this right after my phone's about to die and the charger keeps coming out. It came out during the video. So I'll let this charge for a little bit and then we will go straight into some replays and then some live matches. All right, so we're gonna go into the first replay here. This is kind of gonna be a time capsule replay. I made so many mistakes. This is like one of the first times I've played Expo before. I was not paying attention. I missed the log on this firecracker, and then I do log it too late, and she gets a shot, and he has Goblin Barrel. So just a really bad start, and of course, I knight in the ghost bandit position, but when you have skeletons, you shouldn't be doing that. You should play it behind so that it counters the last goblin. The skeletons can counter the two up top, so... Obviously not a great start by me here. Um, I make so many mistakes, waste my logs so many times in this replay. This is just going to be the first game that we've played with underleveled cards on this account for a video. And I want to kind of see the differences in my gameplay between now and when I finish this series, which will probably be um, when I max out all of these cards because you guys... Like, or when I max all these cards, because you guys have been requesting a lot of underleveled, uh, or not underleveled, but like a lot of cycle decks on my main. I don't have those maxed, so I can't be playing that on top ladder with underleveled cards. It just doesn't work at all. There's no outplay potential because all the players up there know what they're doing. They'll be able to easily overcome the le level weaknesses. But on my alt account, we can kind of demonstrate how you can overcome higher leveled players just by using like the decks that are underleveled in your own skill because when you're playing underleveled you're playing you're pretty much a better player than your overleveled opponent if you guys are about the same trophies they're going to be not as high when they should be because of their card levels so you have a chance of beating them and i failed this log here as well i wasted it and failed it because the tesla took two wizard hits which is a lot of damage so just overall not the best start in the world for this game we almost come back but i made a critical misplay and there is this i'm gonna talk a little bit about what i think skills in this game because like i see a lot of people like always saying that um expo and 2.6 and all of those are like the highest skill cap decks in the game and i agree with that on a to a certain degree on micro which is micro if you guys didn't know is 
the ability to place cards correctly and place them at the right times correctly. It's basically timing and placements. That is micro. And cycle decks require an insane amount of that. Like they are really hard to learn to place all the cards. But the other type of it, macro, which is knowing when to go in or knowing, like predicting the future almost, like no predicting what your opponent is going to play. In my opinion, they just don't take as much as like stuff like golem. Like golem macro is a lot harder of a skill to like recognize because it's kind of like seeing the future. Like you can't really tell if the person is making the right play or not just by watching. But like with micro, you can see, oh wow, they really just uh, made a really nice play with their skeletons or whatever there. So decks like golem. Classic Lumberjack Golem. The Golem first play decks, those are not skillful. That's just hoping that your opponent has a bad starting hand. That's not very skillful in my opinion. Um, but like, Golem Lumberjack is actually really skillful. And we do hit a nice pre-fireball on the Skarmie. It's going to get me a quick lock here. But yeah, going back to that, Golem Fireball, or Golem Lumber, Fireball, Golem Lumberjack, excuse me, is pretty skillful in my opinion. I think it's... Um, I think there are higher skill cap decks than out there, but like with beatdown, you have to be really good at macro. You don't your placements don't matter as much. Like you still need to have good placements, but with beatdown, you have to make sure you're going in at the right times, or else each misplay macro will cost you so much more than a micro misplay usually. Usually um, with cycle decks, so that's kind of my opinion on skill. Uh, as you can see here, we pretty much lost the game. Tricky Barrel, Ice Spirit dies, Archers are not enough. So a really bad start there. And as you can see, I don't play Cycle normally. And I play Control, which has a little bit of both. But my micro with Cycle decks is garbage. It's absolute trash. I have so much to learn with um, micro plays, which is why I always say Expo is no skill on Twitter. It's That's tr not true. I'm just mad when I lose to Expo, honestly. But yeah, I have a lot to learn about this. And I'm kind of excited to be going into something with, um, go, like going into something new in the game. So I'm I'm thankful for YouTube as well because YouTube is like making me expand past the bridge spam decks that I'm comfortable with and to decks that I'm not used to, which is really nice. Especially since my account's getting more and more leveled on my main, it's really cool to be able to play more and more decks. So we'll stop blabbering about skill and me playing new decks on this, and we'll get into the gameplay. So I fail block on the defensive expo, and I fail the skeleton surround. We just have to eat the ice wizard. And I wasn't sure what this was. I thought this was a, just a weird off-meta deck because, well, that's normally what you'd face down here. So pull the Valkyrie up so that it, Tesla stays alive. We're going to try and get as much value out of everything as we can. We have to get it, as much value out of everything as we can, or else overleveled cards will beat us, or the matchup or whatever it is will win. So here... I was not expecting meta. My mind was shifted towards off meta because that's what you normally face down here. So he goes Ice Wizard, and then this is where it clicks. He rockets this uh, Expo, and then I'm like, oh, he's got Valk, Ice Wiz, Log, Expo, Rocket. That's definitely Ice Bow with Valkyrie. So here, cycle the Log to get back to my Skeleton so that I can do the Surround, and this time I do it a little bit better. Um, since the Ice Wizard damage, it doesn't matter that we're able to quickly kill it. And this is where the power power of defensive expos come in. So I go with a high Tesla. <laughs> I should have played that lower. I don't know what the heck I was thinking playing this game. But it is going to end up working out all right. The expo defensive for him will be able to mostly kill it. So I just play archers in the back. I don't want to play anything into that defensive expo and give it value. We're just going to try and kill this Valkyrie with like an ice spirit pulling it back up. And now I can't play my own defensive expo to counteract this. Because his expo would lock on immediately and kill my defensive expo. And that'd be complete waste. So we just fireball it for the damage. And now I'm going to cycle my skeletons to keep myself from bleeding out Elixir. Until his Ice Wizard gets close. And now that his defensive expo is dead, I can go in for my own uh, defensive expo in just a minute. We're going to go for the Tesla, I think. Or do I... In okay, defensive expo first. So he goes in with his own Tesla. And he's going to make a pretty critical mistake in just a second here. So he's going to rocket my tower. That's a no-no. That's a big no-no. Especially since I have a defensive expo and I'm almost back to an offensive expo. So I go with a knight, I think. Yeah, we go with a knight and then we cycle back to another expo. So now he's out a lot of elixir because he rocket cycled. I have a defensive expo stacked and he doesn't have his rocket in cycle because he just used it. So now we go with a fireball log. His expo is now dead. A nice log on his end will help 
the Valkyrie get pretty close to killing it. We'll kill the Skeletons, but no damage on his Expo. My defensive Expo is still getting a ton of value on his Tesla. And our offensive Expo is just doing damage upon damage upon damage. And a quick protection. Look at how much, okay, look at how much Expo, the HP that Expo has. Less than a quarter about. And his tower is at 1600 HP. This Expo is level 10 too. But this Expo, I'm going to keep protecting it. And it's literally going to take his tower with the help of the Fireball down to 100 HP. So you can add about 200 HP. That Expo did 1300 damage as a level 10 with a quarter of its HP left. Like, just from <laughs> my perspective, I think that's a bit broken DPS wise. I think Expo needs a slight nerf dps wise and you can kind of compensate for that by adding maybe slightly more hp i don't think you should increase the lifetime because it's already such a really good defensive troop or not troop building but i think you should um maybe uh decrease its at dps a little bit oh i'm so sorry i can't talk decrease its dps a little bit and increase its hp i think the hp is not really the biggest problem although rocket is like the rocket interaction kind of sucks but i think it's dps is the main uh glaring problem with it so hopefully you enjoyed the replays and me blabbing enjoyed the first loss that is the time capsule game we'll see how the gameplay progresses as we move on and we'll hop into some live games now all right guys so hopping into the first ladder match with 3.0 expo against the level 12 already we're starting off two levels higher and so the problem with the ice spirit at under leveled is that it doesn't connect to the tower so i don't really like cycling it too much he's gonna go with this valkyrie so we're gonna go in with a tesla and my plan here is just going to be to pull this uh, Valkyrie high with the Ice Spirit. He's going to have a Goblin Barrel, so we'll just go in for a quick log. And we're going to hit the Valkyrie as well. So it might actually be bait. No, it's not going to be bait. So we're going to go with the Ice Spirit. It's going to jump onto the Valk still. We can go with our Knight here. And normally, I would counter push with the Defensive Expo if I had even leveled cards. Because, well, he just spent so much Elixir and I got counter push out of it. But I'm actually just going to set up with the Defensive Expo. And I found playing that Defensive Expos are always the wave almost always the wave before you know what your everything that your opponent is playing and how oh my god there is a max level rg but before you know what your opponent is playing or an expo a defensive expo is the way and you can cycle back after getting value with it to another one so this rg is gonna be a problem i don't need to under i don't think you guys i think you guys uh, already know how much of a problem rg is uh, over leveled so we do have to burn our log here but I think this RG is mainly going to die now. Oh my gosh, Tesla doesn't get off another shot. So we are going to have to eat one RG shot. And now that I know he's got RG, and now that I know it's out of cycle, what I want to do here is I think I'm going to go with an offensive Expo and then knight his Valkyrie. We're going to go with our archers actually to defend that. And he's going to have max at level E-barbs. Oof, guys. This is not the uh, optimal situation. We're going to freeze him, and then I think I'm going to try and log them back, and he's going to fireball. Okay, but the archers are still alive, which is nice. They're going to present a little bit of utility. He's going to log them. So, I think I'm up a bit of elixir, but he does have an RG in cycle. So, I can't do anything with that RG in cycle. There's no way I can DPS it down fast enough. You guys see on max level ladder already how good it is. So, again, we're just going to set up with a defensive expo. And I like to use this placement. Actually, it should be one tile over more. Just so that I can play my Tesla. And it's the Tesla's correct position. So now we need to cycle four cards. I'm probably going to need two Teslas for this defense. So we'll cycle our archer's same lane. Go with our Ice Spirit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get down a Knight on this. Just begin DPSing it down. Skeletons, this guy is not making a play. Uh, and now look at this counter push, though. We're going to go with an offensive Expo, and that's a bit too high. But um, Valkyrie's going to take a lot of damage here. We're going to get a nice log onto this Goblin Gang. And now we need to protect this Expo. We need to take capitalize on this lock and oh okay so we're gonna get some nice damage there uh we're gonna have to go with an ice spear and skeletons he's gonna fireball a knight so again rinse and repeat we're gonna go with the defensive expo set up with a tesla and he's gonna go in with the rg right there into the skeletons though which is nice we're gonna get some nice utility out of those skeletons ice spirit log gonna fully clean up that rg um sorry if you guys can hear that background noise uh, my sister, I think, is grabbing something from our garage. But we're going to go with another Tesla, get more value to this defensive expo. We're going to go sky high skeletons, pull that into the Tesla. We're going to have to let the Tesla die, unfortunately. And oh no, the wizard killed my archers. So that's really bad for us. So again, 
we're almost there. We're almost able to go in for a counter push, but not quite. This time he's back to his RG. So he's going to go with a really tricky barrel. So we're, now we can burn our log on the goblins from the goblin gang and get chip damage out of it since we were able to use the archers to counter his... Um, oh, did I screw up the Tesla? No, it looks like it's going to be just barely all right. He's going to hit both. So we do need to make sure this RG doesn't get a hit, and it looks like it's not. So now I'm, I'm, my reaction times are so bad, guys. Now we can't go for another defensive expo or another offensive expo. We can go in for a log, though. He's going to use his own log. I'm going to wait for this wizard to die, and then we'll go with our Tesla. We don't need to use anything other than Ice Spear and Skeletons to protect him. He's going to Fireball Cycle us. So now that we have our defensive expo down, we are going to go really aggressive in the paint here. He's going to go with a really low RG here. Oh, but the expo locked onto the tower, guys. We might actually have just won the game. We're going to space out our archers. I need to make sure I, his fireball doesn't do enough damage. Fireball, his wizard. Can this expo stay alive for a little bit longer? Oh my gosh, guys. Can we win this game? 297, 239 HP. We just need a fireball and a log, I think. He's going to go back to another RG. And log fireball is coming in. 130 HP. We beat a max level RG player to start out the video. You can't get any better than that. Oh, that's really satisfying, guys. I'm really happy with that. Obviously so nice to be oh, max level RG with Expo. I think we played that game much better than the replays that I showed you. Um, like I said, defensive Expo and then counter pushing it worked out really well for us. We were able to use our log a lot on offense because we were able to save, use other units to defend his tricky barrels. And overall, just a really nice game there. That I can't believe that Expo locked on, guys. I was getting ready to just spam the crap out of it to protect it. And we still do, but we actually managed to get um, a lock on and take his tower. So really nice first game, and we'll hop right into the second game. All right, so we have our next game here against Chris from Total Wipeout. Oh, man, who remembers that show? I used to love watching that show. I don't. I think it's on, like, Netflix or something now, but we don't have that. So Total Wipeout, that was an awesome show. So we're just going to fireball that fisherman. I don't really have anything else in cycle. I actually don't think that was the best of plays, but it's fine. And then we'll get some nice log value here on top of the Fisherman to finish it off. And we'll hit the Archer, basically nullifying it. And he's going to have a level 13 balloon. Oh, God. Level 9 heal spirit. Level 10. Like, he's got level 9 and 10 stuff with a level 13 balloon. So I don't think that's death damage. Yeah, especially since both towers help. Really nice for us there. He's a level 11, though. So we can't play our Ice Spirit to get some chip damage, which is unfortunate, but... Actually going to go with ice or skeletons to protect the ice spirit for long enough for it to jump. He's going to go with his bar barrel. Okay. So we'll go with a knight down low. And I think I actually can go with an expo here. I'm going to, I don't think he's going to have um, a mega knight or something. Yeah, he's going to go with his fisherman. So let's see what he's got. He's going to be back to his balloon. Okay. We're just going to go with our um, Tesla here to begin DPSing down. We're going to get a quick lock too. Tesla might survive. Please, Tesla. Nice. So the beauty about that interaction is that we got a lock. We killed his balloon, and our Tesla is still providing value because it doesn't get affected by the death damage. So obviously, that was just completely optimal situation for us there. Cycle a log onto these archers again once we hit 10. And yeah, we're going to protect this Tesla a bit more too. Just a cycle. I mean, I didn't really need to protect it. My Tesla wasn't going to get any more value. I just needed to make sure I was cycling there. So he's back to his balloon, because remember, if you remember, he played his fisherman, and then the next card he played was his balloon. So if he's back to his fisherman, he's now back to his balloon. That's a quick little tip that you guys can use in your own gameplay. And so we'll go with our Tesla here. I do have to watch out. He's going to go with a um, balloon. Oh, no, I might be in trouble here. This maxed out balloon is causing so many problems. But nope, looks like we're going to be pretty good on our defense here. Archers are going to die in the death damage. Fine by me, though. So right now, this is actually a meta deck. Um, but my Tesla is needed in too many places. So we just have to try and get as much value out of it as we can. We'll go with our low defensive expo, about as high as I can place it though. And then we'll log off the recruits here. And we're back to another Tesla, so we should be fine here. I'm just going to fireball that out. Perfect. So now that we've actually uh, gotten a good Clash of Clans base going on right here, we can go with an Ice Spirit, and then we can go with an Expo. Oh god, this Inferno Dragon needs to die. He's going to go Recruits in the back. We're going to protect this, and then we're going to go with our Log. And then if he plays a Fisherman anywhere near, we're going to just take this Fireball. So 
looks like our uh, defensive expo is going to help out a lot against that. We're going to go with the fireball against this Inferno Dragon um, to damage it and to the point where it's not going to do anything. And the Ice Spear is going to freeze. We're going to get a nice win. He got That guy wasn't as overleveled as others. He did have a maxed out balloon, but we did play that pretty cleanly for the most part. We were If he went in balloon later, we were going to be perfectly set to defend it with two Teslas. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was the first installment of Road to Max. I went on a little skill rant. We went on a little bit of a backstory. I think I went on a little, talked a little bit too much about that. But let me know what you guys think of this video. Um, if it's popular, we'll keep going. I Actually, I'm going to keep going for a little bit. But if it stays popular, um, might take this really far and see just how high level we can get this account. So uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you then. Peace.